Oh, hey, Kirk. Can you just talk about, you know, how difficult it was to play at Seattle the past two seasons on prime time and how different might it be this time since uh, there'll be no fans? You won't have the 12s out there to contend with. Yeah, they're a, a great football team. Um, they've done a great job for several years. It's obviously a tough place to play, very loud. And um, I assume there won't be many fans or any fans in the stands on uh, Sunday night. But uh, we still have to contend with a really good team, really good defense, well-coached group. And, uh, um, you know, it'll be a great challenge for us. Kirk, you're getting ready to play Seattle for the fourth straight year in a row. What constants have you noticed about their defense over the over those years? Um, you know, the scheme is pretty similar. Uh, uh, there are variations week to week, uh, year to year. But all in all, I would say that the foundation of the scheme is, is similar. And um, I think Bobby Wagner, K.J. Wright, um, you know, Griffin, there have been some names that have really been there for several years now and done a great job for them. And, uh, um, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a great challenge. Kirk, where have you seen Adam take the biggest leap uh, as the leader of that running back room? Oh, excuse me. Wow. Uh, wide receiver room obviously he's the oldest guy there um but you know from your time that you got here with him in 2018 to now he's got guys looking up to him as the young question leader how do you think he handles that um i mean when i got here in 18 he was a pro bowler uh he was the leading receiver on the team the year before i believe so i think he's been the leader in the receiver room since i got there i don't know if there's been a whole lot of change he's just been himself he's a, a hard worker uh, he relates well to uh, the entire locker room, but certainly the receivers and the younger receivers. Uh, he's very um, uh, helpful. He's he's the complete opposite of, of aloof. You know, if he was aloof and distant, whatever the opposite of that is, that's how he is with the younger players and, and the guys on the team. He's very open and helpful. And um, uh, you know, one of the best ways to lead is through your production on the field, and he's doing that. Uh, but he certainly does as well with his uh, attitude and his personality. Uh, which I think has a positive impact on, on uh, not only the young receivers, but our offense and our locker room. Uh, Kirk, when you look back at the, the last game, uh, does it motivate you or inspire you maybe to give your receivers more chance uh, to come down with contested footballs? Um, I guess you'd have to point to the specific plays. You know, I think uh, the, uh, you know, the last uh, throw of the game, uh, you know, was a uh, under, little underthrown, um, but putting it out there for him. Um, you know, the third down to Justin across the middle was certainly a you know a tight deal where he had to you know make a great catch. Um, you know, Adams touchdown was a tight tight deal where he had to kind of catch it with one hand while he was being held. So I tried to really put it out there for them. You know, I threw one off my back foot to Rudy that was probably ill advised that was in a tight window that he he went up and got because uh, I trust him. So. Uh, you know, I, I felt like uh, we try to throw those as much as we can and, and also be responsible to not uh, be putting the ball in harm's way. Hey, Kirk, um, Justin Jefferson, he's second in the league, averaging 21.8 yards per catch. What kind of extra dimension does it give you when you got a receiver who's averaging over 20 yards a catch to be able to stretch the field like that? Yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, he's making plays, creating separation, finishing plays. And, um, you know, it would be an exciting challenge every week to try to find uh, new opportunities to get him the football. Kirk, what has been the biggest difference for you guys in these first couple of road trips with all these different regulations? And just how has that affected preparation for games on the road, just with all the different things you have to think about, aside from just getting ready for the game? Uh, there's scheduling differences. Um, there's subtle differences like, you know, when you have the pregame meal at breakfast, there's only four players at a table instead of maybe having six or eight. Uh, so we're a little more spread out. Uh, we're doing our chapel, you know, virtually. So we're sitting in our rooms on a computer instead of being in a room together. Um, obviously, you don't get to the game on Sunday at noon and feel like those things had a major impact on your preparation. It's just a little different wrinkle to throw into your routine. and. Um, Again, it starts to become a new normal after you've done it for a few weeks, and uh, there's plenty of sacrifices we're happy to make uh, as long as it, it ensures we can have a, a football season and play these games. 
Uh, hey, Kirk, what was it like having Tony Dungy address you guys the night before last weekend's game, and what was kind of his message? Yeah, Tony uh, did a great job. Obviously, he's given a lot of chapel talks through the years, and we uh, have some really good chapel talks over the last several seasons. Um, but certainly Saturday night was another one, and uh, he just spoke from the heart. I think he spoke from uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9. He spoke from uh, uh, Ma uh, Book of Matthew uh, chapter 16, I believe it was verse 25. Um, so he had some good scripture, and then uh, you know was able to expound on that scripture with some stories from his playing days, from his days with Chuck Knoll, and his ex long experience in, in professional football. So I think, uh, you know, when you can hear from someone like that who's seen it all, uh, it was a great opportunity to, uh, to hear from him. Jumping back off kind of Ben's question there, you know, how different is it because you're so used to Seattle being, you know, 12th man, the really loud environment when you're on offense. Uh, for a quarterback, how different is it in like the way that you run a huddle, not having that and getting plays like from the sideline? I guess maybe not even just there, but in, in the other road games you guys have had so far this year too. Yeah, the biggest difference, I think I've said it a few times, so I don't mean to be repeating myself, but uh, uh, just saying the, the play in the huddle quietly, I'm used to saying it at the top of my lungs in, in an away stadium and in Houston on Sunday. I'm actually trying to say it with you know some level of quiet and calm in my voice, and I want a tight huddle. I want the lineman to create a bit of a wall so that you know the defense couldn't read my lips or get a feel for the play uh, across the, the line of scrimmage. So I think that's probably the biggest difference from a normal year, um, but it's a, probably a pretty subtle difference compared to uh, you know all the other things we're dealing with. A few more questions for Kirk. Yeah, Kirk. He has. Uh... Why do you think offenses are so far ahead of defenses through the first month? I, I don't know. I, I don't have a great answer. I, I didn't know that stat, so uh, I wouldn't be able to give you an informed answer. So sorry about that. All right. Hey, Kirk, you guys haven't beaten the Seahawks since Mike Zimmer got here in 2014. Kind of with, with that in mind and uh, just kind of building off the first win, is this kind of a big chance for you guys to make a statement in the NFC this week? It's a great opportunity. Um, you know, anytime you can go on the road and play a really good football team, you have a great opportunity to, uh, you know, to do something special and, and uh, you know, get our season continuing on the right track. Um, so we look forward to that. And, and right now on Wednesday, we just need to, you know, put together great meetings, great practice, and take the steps we can take today to, uh, to start moving towards that goal on Sunday.